Now, for more insights, we are now joined from Moscow by Fred Weir. Now, Fred is a journalist and a political commentator. Fred, let me first up throw a couple of figures at you here. Vladimir Zelensky end of the year news conference on December 19th says the military had proposed mobilizing 450,000 to 500,000 more Ukrainians but that it was a highly sensitive issue that the military and the government would discuss before deciding whether to send the proposal to the parliament. Now this is by his own admission there. Now the Ukrainians have volunteered to fight to defend their country in the past. But with mounting losses and harsher punishments for deserters, as we spoke about just now, do you sense a war fatigue that is setting in? You had said a year ago that the long-term mathematics of this conflict are all to Russia's advantage. Uh, people would... Uh, uh, deny it or, or think you're a tiny minority. Uh, but now it's dead obvious that that's exactly what is taking shape. Russia's massive advantages in um, population, industry, uh, and, and I would say uh, it's political will, which has been quite resilient, I guess. Uh, it certainly all talk of Putin uh, being overthrown or collapsing uh, has been greatly exaggerated. Uh, Russia has consolidated and is um, now on a war footing, both economically and in terms of, of mobilizing manpower, of which it has a lot to spare, uh, and Ukraine is on the back foot. Um, I, I don't actually know how, where this is going. It's, it's clear that um, the issue of mobilization is incredibly sensitive in both countries. I think we all remember what happened in 2022 when uh, Putin or ordered a, a partial mobilization of 300,000 men. Uh, immediately, hundreds of thousands of young Russians uh, left the country. Um, so in both countries, uh, this is this is a, a serious issue. Uh, the idea of going and probably dying in this horrible war is not popular. Um, among young men or men of any age, uh, with the exception of Ukraine at the beginning. And as you pointed out in the first stage of the war, uh, the most patriotic people uh, stood up for the country's defense. Ukrainians fought uh, with a, a great deal of determination and, and grit. Um, uh, uh, but now that's, that, of course, that's wearing thin. And, and those who don't want to go uh, have have been avoiding it, are now uh, finding themselves under under a lot of coercion and, and force. There are there are apparently like press gangs in the street, uh, rounding up young men and 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 forcing them into military service. Now, this has got to be deeply unpopular and and a political problem, a growing one in in Ukraine. Right, Fred. You earlier commented about exaggerated sense of Putin's might. How do you see this war panning out in the near future, especially juxtaposed against what Putin said in his New Year's address, where he very passionately said that, yes, we too want to end the war, but only on our own terms. And Zelensky, in a way, refuting a sense of fatigue and weakness, recently said that Ukraine, unlike any other country, has managed to repel an utter annihil annihilation attempt by Russia by way of missiles and drone attacks in the last few days. Um, you know, it's it's not going to end according to anyone's wishes, and we've all been wrong. Uh, let's face it. Um, in uh, I mean, analysts of all stripes have been have been wrong from the beginning of this war, about how it's going to go, how it's how it is presently. Um, the one thing I've always stuck to is the mathematics just favor Russia. They just do, even with the support of the West behind Ukraine. Um, this is a, a very unequal struggle, and. Uh, as long as Russia maintains its political cohesion, and it clearly is doing so, uh, it's eventually going to prevail. Uh, and now we do see the um, determination of the West, particularly the United States, to keep supporting Ukraine as long as it takes, as much as it takes. Apparently, you know, that doesn't really, um, you know, that, that's, that, that was never credible. You know, uh, we've all been in the room watching Americans fight their own wars for the past several decades, from Vietnam to Afghanistan, uh, and they always cut and run. 
it, when it gets inconvenient, and, and they are apparently doing it again. Um, nobody should be surprised at that, but for Ukraine, I guess, uh, who depended so much on it, it it's a terrible shock. Um, but this is, uh, this is winding down, and as Putin said, I guess, uh, they're going to end, Russia's going to end it on Russian terms. Uh, and those are going to be much, much harsher than they might have been mm. two years ago. I'm afraid uh, the, there is a growing uh, grim determination that one senses in Moscow. They're clearly preparing some kind of hammer blow, perhaps a fresh invasion from the north of Ukraine uh, in the springtime. Uh, and uh, I think there is a desire to end it in Moscow. But Increasingly, they're confident that it's going to be on their terms. Mm. While you very eloquently just answered part of my next question, let me still ask you this to give our viewers a sense of better perspective. The World Bank earlier estimated that the pre-war average age of the Ukrainian population was between 35 to 49, which is around 26% share of Ukraine's total male population. Now, if I were to talk about Russia, it has its own set of problems, no denying there. And after nearly two years of war, both Russia and Ukraine are running out of ammunition. Now, there are no winners in war. We all know that. But given the current situation, Russia or Ukraine, who do you think has the upper hand? Well, um, yeah, yes, Russia. And, and by the way, and, uh, as far as um, the production of war material is concerned, the Russian economy has been ramping up to a war footing over the past year. Uh, or so, and, and people often forget that Russia is the rump of the former Soviet Union, which never had any difficulty producing military equipment and materiel. Uh, there's a muscle memory there uh, that's being put into action, and I don't think Russia, I mean, well, it's clear that Russia has not run out of ammunition during this entire struggle, and um, it, I don't think anybody should bet any money that it will in the months to come. Thank you so much, Fred Weir, for joining us with that analysis on the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you.